Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Irene. And I'm Jacques of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. It is interesting to see all the new research applications for CRISPR-Cas9. Almost all the genetic studies and evolutionary studies so far can identify genes or show an association between the gene and a phenotype. But they are really able to prove it or tell us anything about the molecular mechanisms. The paper by Nakamura is a great example. They use CRISPR-Cas9 to show the molecular processes responsible for the development of thin skeleton. Up to now, there was not much known about the process. Even though fins and hands superficially look the same, it's not that simple because fins develop from skin and are called dermal bone. Fingers, on the other hand, develop from the ossification of cartilage and is called endochondral bone. Those are different mechanisms, so it's unclear how digits arose evolutionary. To understand the role of Hox13 genes, the authors inactivated the two copies of the Hox13A gene, as well as the single copy of Hox13D. In Hox13 knockout fish, there is a marked reduction in loss of fin rays and an increase in endochondral bones, characteristic of fingers. This indicates that digits could have originated by, via a change in the function of the cells. Ah, now we finally know the answer to the mystery of where fish fingers come from. But seriously, this is a powerful technique that is going to change how developmental and evolutionary studies are going to be conducted. For example, Perry et al. have used it to see how genes control the range of color vision in butterflies. And Martin et al. studied which genes are involved with limb development in crustaceans. But before we go out on a limb, we are out of time for today. We would love to hear your thoughts about our show and topics you would like us to discuss. To subscribe to our Simon channel, watch more episodes, or get more information, click on the boxes on your screen. Until next time, bye. Bye.